Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 13, titled Vote of Confidence. It originally premiered on February 12th, 1988. It is written by John Shulian. That name should sound familiar because he also wrote Down for the Count Part 1 and 2 and Amen, Send Money. Also teleplay writer for a bunch of other episodes. He's got some good episodes under his belt. Yeah. Yeah. Willing to take a little yeah. chance, too. He killed Zito. <laughs> I'll never forgive him. <laughs> that bastard. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Till he did it on purpose. Yeah, he killed him on purpose. <laughs> the director is Randy Roberts, and it's the only episode he ever directed. And it just seems like such a fake name. I was I'm like, what? Randy sorry, Roberts. Sorry, Randy, but I'm sure you're a nice guy, but you've like got a fake name. Two first names. <laughs> All right, Sean, I have to admit, this theme doesn't seem to stand out as much as it did last week. What do you got for us in music this time? <laughs> we have numero uno, one single song, and that is Stand and Deliver by Mr. Mister. Oh, uh, it's not even my favorite <laughs> Mr. Mister song. Yeah, no, right? So Mr. Mister was a pop rock band consisting of Richard Page, Steve George, Pat Mustelato, and Steve Ferris. We have to go back to the origin, and that would take us back to Richard Page, who was previously a session musician for Quincy Jones Mm. and had composed music for Michael Jackson, Rick Springfield, Donna Summer, and even Kenny Loggins. (laughs) I'm all right. Don't nobody worry about me. (laughs) And that actually is the theme with Mr. Mister, is that pretty much they were all session musicians. Richard Page was uh, actually childhood friends with Steve George, session musicians together. They actually did some backing vocals for some pretty big musicians as well. They sang backup vocals for Al Jarreau, Cher, Amy Grant, Barry Manilow, Toto. In 1978, the two, Page and George would form the band Pages. They would release three albums with positive reviews, but with very little success. They only had one minor hit, a song called I Believe in You. After not finding success, they actually disbanded in 81, and George and Page focused on songwriting and studio work, working with uh, pop star Laura Branigan and working with the village people. Of all people. (laughs) So, uh, and that includes singing backups for the village people. By 1982, they decided to try the band life again and actually brought in fellow session artists, Pat Massalato and Steve Ferris on guitar. And that would form Mr. Mister. So where things get a little kind of interesting is that when they were getting ready to release their first album in 1984, Paige was offered the chance to replace Bobby Kimball as the lead singer of Toto. Uh, But alas, he didn't miss the rains down in Africa. And actually, later, he even had a chance to replace Peter Cetera in Chicago. He ended up turning them both down. Mm. And by their second album, they would break out. Welcome to the Real World would actually have three top ten singles on it. Two uh, hitting number one with the songs Kyrie and Broken Wings. It would result in them getting two Grammy nominations and touring with some pretty big names like Tina Turner, Hart, and Don Henley. You know, the boyfriend <laughs> of Donna again. Rice. <laughs> Just won't leave. <laughs> so the third album, Go On, would not be anywhere near as successful. And would be the beginning of the end of Mr. Mister. Ground this time, they would actually write the title song for the movie Stand and Deliver. They would also make Is It Love for the movie Stakeout. But in 1988, guitarist Steve Ferris would leave the band. First to leave, first to regret it. <laughs> uh, the remaining... <laughs> The remaining members immediately act as the backing band for Christian artist Paul Clark's album before hitting the studio themselves to record their fourth album, Go. But Paul would not be released. It would uh, After they completed it in 90, the record label decided to wait to release it, and the band would break up, and so they never released it. It would remain unreleased, except for one of the songs that found its way on a Greatest Hits album, for 20 years. 
before finally being released in, in 2010 on a remastered version. After the band, Page would do some, he'd release some solo albums. The common theme is that after the band broke up, they pretty much all went and did session work and compo- composed. The difference is being is Page would release like three of his own albums. And then he would be approached by Gringo Star to join Gringo's band, the 11th All-Star Band, in 2010. And he has toured with them multiple times, the last being 2017. Damn. Steve George, after leaving the band, he would become the musical director for Kenny Loggins throughout the 90s. He would enter the danger zone. (laughs) (laughs) And he's most recently toured with Jewel as her touring keyboardist. Ouch. Mm. Ouch. Mestalato. He would go on to do, of course, more session work for people like Hall and Oates and Eddie Money. Uh, he would also co-produce Peter Kingsbury's first solo album before joining the band King Crimson. He's been a member since 94 and appeared on over 20 of their albums. King Crimson's kind of got like a cult following, but probably aren't aren't the biggest known. I, I know I've talked 20, about him in the music. 20 albums since 1994. Yes. Okay, it yeah, is that's been, insane. Yeah, it's been 24 years since 1994. How many freaking albums is that band putting out? See, Pat Masolato, he is that guy. He is that he not only did he do 20 albums with this band, but he was also in a crap load of other bands you have never heard of. <laughs> he just he just never stopped working. He just works for anybody. And then last but not least, Steve Ferris. So I left Steve for last because Sadly, he does not have a Wikipedia page. I had to go. I had to go searching for his biography. And before I get into what he did after the band, I want to talk a little bit about what I found in a biography that was suspiciously. Let's put it this way: I read a biography online that very well could have been, could have been written by Steve Ferris himself. <laughs> All I know is that the biography claims. After a show, he was invited by a member, an unnamed member of KISS, to audition to replace Ace Freely after Ace had left the band. And he was actually invited to join. They actually picked him to replace Ace Freely. But for some reason or another, it just never worked out. Mm. Sounds suspicious. So (laughs) Very suspicious. It got very vague at the end of that. But apparently so. And then he would play with Eddie Money for three years before joining uh, Mr. Mister. Now, since Mr. Mister, he would work as a session musician. Also, if you Google his name, Steve Ferris, you will see he's got a bunch of YouTube videos, mostly him talking about different guitars. This hmm. is his blue one. This is his red one. <laughs> so he likes to he likes to play his blue one when he has the blues. Um, he is also composed for advertisements uh, for companies like Budweiser, Chrysler, Southern Bell, and Audi. But that's not all he is. It's not all about music with him. He is also a hunting enthusiast. He has started several hunting groups and has appeared on hunting shows on the Outdoor Channel, The Dangerous Game, and Ruger's Outdoor Adventure, as well as co-hosting Beretta Waterfowl Fowler's Edge with Sean Mann. (laughs) I wonder if at every commercial break with... On the hunting shows that he's on, they play Broken Wings. <laughs> <laughs> or it's just one of his YouTube videos of him talking about guitars. This one's purple with polka dots. <laughs> yeah, this one's I red. I use it sometimes. <laughs> there you have everything you ever wanted and even what you probably didn't want to know about <laughs> Mr. Mr. The best people are the ones that don't have a Wikipedia page. Because they write their own notion. The website was like user.net. Dot, like, <laughs> like it was like someone's like someone started a Reddit post and then quit. And somehow it found its way onto the Internet. <laughs> it was somewhat at though. <laughs> Well, except, except for maybe that whole kiss part. <laughs> that seems highly unlikely, but you know. Well, you would think if he was offered a job joining Kiss, that he would that would have justified him to receive his own Wikipedia page. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. You know, uh, we may be overrating it. So let's go talk this one through. 
And that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoy this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, heat at gmail.com, twitter.com slash go with the heat, facebook.com slash go with the heat, Instagram, go with the heat. You know where to find us. We would love to hear from you. Please send us a message. What do you think about this episode? Do you think we're off base on this one? How do you think this would fare in season two or three as an episode? And does it benefit from being in between both semen and baseballs? <laughs> 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 email us go with the heat at gmail.com let us know be sure to check out that website go with the heat.com check out all the ways you can subscribe to the show all the ways that you can support us support number one go on your podcast platform of choice and give us a rating support number two send us a message let us know we got some very nice notes this last week on twitter we would love to see your support be sure to check out that website go with the heat.com click on support and you'll find all the ways you can support us including that patreon patreon.com slash go with the heat that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals.